Sunday in Advent. Hard to believe, huh? So, well, let's stand together as we worship the Lord this morning and uh, a little more contemporary version of a very famous uh, Christmas carol, Come All Ye Faithful. Amen. that we're gonna we're gonna go to the hymnal all right all right so yeah that's all right no problem no problem all right so let's find that one because I do want to do that one today okay so uh, oh come all ye faithful 175 thank you yeah so let's turn our hymnals and let's let's sing that okay We agree. 
So today's the third Sunday in Advent, and this is the prophets not only proclaimed that God would send his son into the world, but they also foretold the rejoicing that would accompany his coming. The hearts of men, women, and children were filled with joy and gladness as the realization of his promise drew near. Today we light the third, all three of the uh, purple, can two purple candles and a pink candle, sorry. Today we relight the candle of expectation recalling God's promise to send a Savior to his people. As we relight the candle of preparation, we remember how John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus. Now, as we light the candle of proclamation, our hearts are filled with joy as we proclaim that his advent will soon take place. We rejoice in the advent of the Son of God and await the day when he will return. May our lives be filled with joy as he guides us in proclaiming his truth to those around us each day. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just humbly come before you and we just thank you for this day. We thank you as we prepare our hearts for your second coming, dear Lord, as we remember and rejoice and celebrate your first coming as you became a little babe, stepping down from your throne and coming down to your creation who was born to die for the atonement of our sins. Dear Lord, we just ask you to be in this service today, that your Holy Spirit fill this entire building, let it touch each and every one of us, let us, let us feel and know your presence today, dear Lord. Let those that walk along the streets and drive by know that your Spirit resides here and is pouring out into this community, dear Lord, and touching lives all around. Dear Lord, we ask you to, the, um, to let the message that Pastor Joe has for us that you put on his heart, let it touch our mind and our heart, let it open our, our, our thoughts about you and convict our heart if there's anything that we need to get right with you, dear Lord. And this is your service, this is your day, your people, and your church, and we give this, we lift all this up to your Lord, to your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. All right, uh, let's sing, uh, angels we have heard on high, glory and excelsis Deo. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song? Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria, 
in excelsis Deo Gloria in excelsis Deo Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in your field abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with men is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. about uh, Christmas carols, there's so much theology, and of course it's talking about that first coming, and it's talking about the second coming, and that our hope is that one day soon that second advent will happen, right, and that he'll descend out of the clouds. As we go to prayer this morning, uh, we have a, several things we want to mention to you. Uh, first of all, I have a video uh, from uh, the Cunninghams, and uh, so a, a little kind of end-of-the-year end type of uh, video, and uh, explaining kind of where they're at in their ministry. Uh, after they posted this, um, uh, a situation happened where uh, they actually tore down the wrong house, demolished the wrong house. Uh, and so this is, this is not a good thing. Uh, so, uh, however, they're hoping that the individual is, you know, it needed to be torn down. Uh, but what it was that, you know, in those kind of disaster areas, you know, the numbers kind of get a little confused with which house is which. So uh, the actual number of the house uh, had kind of been taken, like a, a board had been taken and put on the wrong house, and so is what happened. So uh, be praying for them, uh, and uh, you'll see a little bit update, uh, but they will be home at least for uh, the Christmas holidays, so we are anticipating that. And then Denise has some, uh, some highlights, so if you want to go ahead and come on up, and then following the video, uh, there are some slides, and she's going to talk about their street ministry yesterday. So why don't you go ahead and come on up, and now can go ahead and play that, please. So there's no place like home for the holidays. Well, as everyone can see, we have camp ball decorated. We're ready for Christmas. A little Christmas tree over there. I don't yes. Know if you can see it, though. But uh, it looks like we'll be home for Christmas. We just found out that we will be flying home for a week or a little more than a week for Christmas. So hope to see everyone while we are. Home. December 19th and through January 3rd. So that's hopefully that's what we believe with yes. the dates. But so we'll see everyone in a couple of weeks. But things here are kind of winding down but not winding down we're just about finished up with all the gutting and cleaning up around people's homes but it's now going to the sad part where almost all of our jobs are demolitions where we're just tearing everything down yes. the homes aren't able to be saved and 
sorry to say right now we probably have 50 or 60 waiting to be done and we keep getting calls every day yes every day i'm assessing three four five more demos so christ in action did make that tough decision to extend so we'll be back to work on january 4th through probably january 25th um and we'll just have a small little core team here of doing nothing but demos. Yeah, do all machine work almost right. from Christmas on out. Right. Here, just like Kath says, just the core team, all the equipment operators, and a couple people here take care of camp and the phones and Kathy doing assessments. But that's okay. We'll get the job done and be home to see everyone. That's right. That's right. And you know. Wayne and I don't even think we've been home for 60 days this whole entire year. And as far as leaving home, we left home July 15th. Although we were home for one week at the end That's of right. September. We but home. other than that, we've been gone. So we are definitely looking forward to coming home, spending times with the kids and the grandkids and church family and friends. Oh, we miss you guys so much. And keep in mind, we could not do this without your support. So if anybody needs for tax purposes any year-end tax right deductible on. donations, please think of Cunningham's. You can donate to us on ChristInAction.com slash Cunningham. So we Thanks. love you. Thanks, everyone. God Merry bless you. Christmas. Hope Merry you Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Bye. Happy New Year. yesterday um, well you can see up here we had a team of seven that went out with us yesterday for our street ministry and um, well pastor Doug was also there as well um, it's really powerful and I want to tell you that um, you really make a difference in street ministry because of you giving socks hats coats blankets, food, water, um, necessities, crisis care packets. Uh, there were so many lives that were touched yesterday. And I, I just want to let you know that there was, uh, I, I just want to say one testimony yesterday. Um, we had a, uh, a husband and wife, they just lost their home in a fire. And we were able to give them blankets. We were able to give them whatever we had, we gave them. And um, if you would just see uh, some of these people in their lives, and, and some of them are on the streets, you know. Um, we had a video. We came across one kid. We were all on our, we were on our way home, and we were pulling our wagon. We had a little bit of stuff left in there. And we came across a kid. His name was CJ. Um, and we asked if we can pray for him for anything. And CJ um, had a Bible sitting on his lap. And he was sitting there reading the word of God. Great reminder for us because um, for B, here he is. He had nothing. He had nothing. And I mean when I tell you nothing, he had nothing. He was sitting on a crate, but he was reading the word of God. And he had Jesus. Boy, did he have Jesus. He had Jesus so much that he was full of the Holy Spirit, and he blessed us. And so... I prayed for him, and after I prayed for him, Elissa had said um, to you about because one of my prayers was about using his talents for the Lord, and he had a voice, and he began to sing, I Can Only Imagine. And we began to join in singing with him on the streets in Market Square in the city of Pittsburgh, and because of all of you, you guys made that happened you made his day um he was so happy to get what was it the little oranges we gave him cuties. yeah they're little cuties he said i love cuties and you know what he put his head down and he cried he was crying because he was blessed with food and water but he had the word of god and we were all singing with him 
So I just want to say thank you to the uh, Lincoln Place Church of the Nazarene because on the city of Pittsburgh, in the city of Pittsburgh, our church is known for what you guys do. You you guys do so much, and I just really want to applaud you guys because you make this all happen. So thank you very much. Thank you. That's a good word and a good testimony, and we thank God for what he's doing there. Amen. Amen. Uh, in your bulletin, you'll see the other things that are listed there for you. So please take note of those, uh, the concerns that you have. And uh, lots of praises again. And we thank God for what he's doing. But a beautiful song we're going to sing, Child in the Manger. And uh, it's, it's a Christmas carol. But just, again, the, 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 the theology behind these songs is absolutely beautiful. And it just, you know, uh, prophets foretold him, infant of wonder, angels behold him on his throne. Worthy our Savior of all our praises, happy forever are his own. And that is our hope, isn't it? Amen. Let's stand together as we worship the Lord this morning. Shout in the manger, infants of Mary. Outcast and stranger, Lord of all, shout who inherits all our transgressions, all our demerits on him fall. Once the most holy child of salvation, shanly and lowly lived below. Now as our glorious mighty Redeemer, see him victorious o'er every foe. Prophets foretold him, infants of wonder. Angels behold him on his throne. Worthy a Savior of all our praises, happy forever. Are his own. It's perfect of all plans for the redemption of our sin. You could have came down as a mighty conqueror. You could have came down as the king of all kings, but you came down as a little babe. You lived amongst us so that we can come to know you. You made it so that we can actually know what it's like to know this Savior. That you're not some far off just thing that we can't even get close to. Dear Lord, such a great love you have for your people. Dear Lord, I think about all the prayers that are in this church at this time. The situation with Kathy and Wayne is that house got torn down. And, you know, I just know that somehow you're going to make it perfect. Dear Lord, because those people have their heart open to you and to your way. And they're reaching out with your love as the body of Christ to others that are hurting. And... I know in some way, dear Lord, that you're just going to make everything right again. I, I ask for traveling mercies for Kathy and Wayne as they make their way home to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ with us. But I also ask for traveling mercies as uh, Dusty and Libby are still working their way home as well so they can be here in time for, for everything that needs to be done. And others who are traveling at this time, dear Lord, this is one of the most traveled times on the calendar, and I just ask you to be with all those people and, you know, just 
put a hedge of protection around them and make keep them secure. And there's others who are still dealing with, with uh, health issues, dear Lord. Um, you know, I pray that, that you that you're with Shar as she goes through her PET scan and and you know with others, dear Lord, that, that deal with these type of things that most of us don't even comprehend what it what it takes to you know to make sure that everything's okay. And you know, dear Lord, this time of year it's a joyous time for us because we're celebrating the birth of your of your son. But it's also a sad time for many others who have had lost loved ones. And I just ask you to be with those, dear, with them, dear Lord. Just, you know, put a peace upon their heart and an understanding in their mind that they are, you know, if they gave their heart to you, that they are now with you in eternal glory. No pain, no suffering, no tears, and no fear. You know, it's just that type of feeling that, that they've gone home and they're waiting for us. And then, dear Lord, I also want to lift up the praises of your people. They'll, you know, it, it warms my heart that the back of the bulletin is filled with so many praises of answered prayer and people recognizing you for who you are and who you are in their life. You, you know, that's that's what being a Christian is all about. It's not just asking, but it's also recognizing and, and just loving you, dear Lord, because you loved us first. You know, you loved us before time even began, before we were even thought about being created. You loved us beyond any word could ever describe. And we just recognize you today, dear Lord. We praise your holy name. We give you all the glory and all the honor because you are so worthy to receive it. And we lift this up to your wonderful and, and majestic and just, I mean, the words can go on. Your son, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For all those who would want to be anointed, please come sit in the front pew. And would the staff please come forward and anoint us. Thank you. His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you Alleluia Alleluia Meskin it shall given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you.
these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Okay, now it's time for another form of worship, which is our tithes and offerings. And, you know, we always got to keep in mind that Jesus gave up everything for us, and he only asked for 10% from us back, and that's of our tithing, of our time, of our talents, of our gifts. But, you know, we should be willingly able to, wanting to give all of ourselves to him since he, he loved us before we loved him. He loved us when we, he, we were his enemy, and he gave all of himself, all the way to the last drop of his blood for us. So the scripture for today is, if you give, you will get. Your gift will return to you in full and overflowing measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, and running over. Whatever measure you use to give, large or small, will be used to measure what is given back to you. Luke 6, 38. So at this time, will the ushers please come forward for our tithes and offerings. Pastor Joe's working his way up here. I just want to—I want to thank the Browns for opening up their home for the men's ministry Christmas uh, get together that we did on Friday. It was a great time of fellowship, a lot of fun, a lot of food, good food. And you know, if you're not part of the women's or men's ministry, you should really consider being part of it. You're missing out on a very big part of being in fellowship in the church. And that's being with not just like-minded people within the church, like we talked about today in Sunday school, but with people not only of like mind, but also can have shared experiences and stuff that only a group of women or a group of men getting together can do. Um, and you're missing out on another piece of actually your walk along the path with Christ. And as experiencing these things with others and talking about them, uh, that others may be able to help you. So I'm just trying to put out a little plug out there for next year. For those who have not attended a woman's ministry or a men's ministry, please do. Just attend one time. That's all I'm asking you. One time, it's once a month, so you got 12 opportunities to please attend, see what it's like. Uh, you may be pleasantly surprised. Thank you. Yes, that's uh, thank you. Yeah, we do appreciate the Browns opening up their home, and uh, that was we had a very, very good night uh, uh, with the men, and... Uh, 
a, a smaller crowd than usual, but it was, we had lots of good food <laughs> for sure and, uh, and beautiful home to, to fellowship in. Uh, just draw your attention to a couple of things, though, by way of announcements. Uh, we, do, uh, we are planning on having uh, several activities next Sunday. Uh, the, the one main thing, of course, is that uh, we're going to be having our uh, church Christmas play. This is the first play that we've done like this in many, 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 many years. And that is, uh, it's, not an, it's not a reader's theater, okay? It's actually a performance of a play, uh, memorized parts and so forth. So, uh, and uh, Brother Howard, uh, uh, you got your parts memorized, do you? He, he, he has it there, so, um, so I, I want to thank, I want to thank all of the people that have volunteered, and some of you, Barry, you, you've never been in a play before, right? Uh, are you nervous? He, 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 will, he will be nervous, so uh, j just to say, you know, it's, it's going to be a great, great play. It has a tremendous message. You do not, you do not want to miss the Christmas play. Uh, having said that, there, there is no Sunday school, okay, because we'll be having the stage ready and we're going to be having a final kind of run through and getting our costumes on and so forth. And so uh, you don't want to miss this. It's, it's, it's really, it really talks about what Christmas is about, and that's God's love. And, and that really is what Christmas is truly all about. Uh, so don't forget, no Sunday school, uh, no Sunday school next Sunday. And then if you don't want to come to the play, uh, then you can come and eat afterwards, okay? So if you want to come and eat, uh, then show up around noon, all right? Uh, and this is our holiday reception. Uh, as you know, we used to do uh, big, big uh, Christmas dinners uh, and uh, used to be over the daycare and uh, Paul's daycare and we had, it was a be beautiful place. And thank you all those years we did that and uh, really appreciate that. Uh, but it's a lot of work, and uh, the attendance was dwindling, dwindling, dwindling. And so we decided we're not going to do that. So we haven't done that for probably close to maybe four or five years now. And so I uh, just want to let you know that we are going to have a holiday reception. And Denise and the stewards, they're getting that pulled together for next week. And it's going to be a nice spread and uh, actually going to be food. It's not going to be just sweets. So it will be food, and so this is your time to fellowship after the play, and yes, brother. It's going to be regular church time, thank you. Yeah, so regular church time at 1030. If you are, if you're a little late, uh, like if you come at 11 usually at church, you're going to miss most of it. Uh, so uh, just encourage you to be here at 1030 next Sunday, okay? Uh, having said that, uh, the folks over here will need to move over here because uh, you won't be able to see it because a lot of the action takes place back here and you won't be able to see it, okay? Uh, and so I just encourage you to be here. People have really, really worked hard, really hard. And uh, so we're going to have our final run through here today right after church. If I could have some of the able-bodied men uh, to help us uh, clear the platform uh, so that we can get everything set up for the play for next Sunday. Uh, right after uh, the service, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, I'm not able to do that anymore. So uh, this would be a great time for you to invite family and friends, okay? And so if you want to, uh, hand them this flyer, okay, and let them know. Uh, also, uh, during our luncheon, uh, we're going to have an ugly sweater contest. This was not my idea. Okay, uh, as you know, this is not my kind of thing, okay? But this is for those really creative people in our church who like kind of fun stuff. Uh, so this is uh, the rules on the back. So right after church, you, I guess you could wear your sweater to next Sunday if you want to wear it to church. It might be distracting from the play, though. Uh, but uh, if you want to change afterwards, uh, feel free to do that. Because you, I see that you actually get a $25 gift card, the winner. So I don't know who's paying that. The church sure isn't. The church sure isn't paying that. Uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, you can ask Pastor Joe or Pastor Jim or Rich to borrow one of theirs. Now, I'm not sure just what that means. Rich, do you, ha do you have a? I, I, 
Do, do you have one? Just the one you wear every day. We're not going to go there, Jim. We're not going to go there. Yeah. So anyway, uh, okay. So uh, just so that you know that, so we have a lot of fun next Sunday. Uh, good food, and you're going to enjoy the play and so forth. If you want to go uh, March for Life, uh, I actually didn't know we were going here. I told them we, we weren't going this year. <laughs> so I guess we are going to go. Uh, so if you are, uh, then please see Judy, and uh, she'll give you the heads up there. Uh, believe it or not, uh, you know, uh, Christmas Eve is coming very soon. Uh, and so... Um, we are going to be having our regular, yes, I do understand, and I, yes, I do know that a lot of people don't like it when Christmas falls on Sunday, but I'm thinking, well, the only reason you would actually be in church anyway is because of Christmas. You understand what I'm saying, right? So Christmas really is about Jesus, right? Right? Okay. So uh, people get really, really upset when Christmas falls on Sunday. Um, I'm thinking, wow, I'm not sure I quite, I'm not sure I quite get that. But anyway, uh, so yes, we will be having Christmas Eve. I know it's Saturday night, okay, and I know Christmas is Sunday. But to help you, okay, and being able to be with your family and so forth on Christmas morning, the church service will just be at 11, Okay, and I promise it will only be an hour long and you can get home to your Christmas dinner and whatever else you got scheduled there. Okay, so uh, Christmas Eve is at 630. Okay, Christmas Eve communion and then Christmas Day is 11. So then the next week will be what? New Year's and we don't really care about that. That doesn't matter to you guys, right? We are not, though, going to have our New Year's Eve celebration, okay, because of it being on a Saturday and being late, okay, we would not do that and then come here on church on Sunday, 11 o'clock New Year's Day as well. So all those things are on the back of this, okay, so you can keep that right there in front of you, all right? And so thank you so much. Um, uh, Miss Carol had wanted me to announce that um, if you are interested in being on our ushers and greeters uh, schedule to help out, uh, please see her. And also, if you don't want to do it anymore, please see her, okay? And so uh, she's right back there in the back pew, and so I did make myself a note, otherwise I would have forgotten. All right. Well, guess what? Uh, we had a couple birthdays this week. You know, how many have birthdays in December? How many have birthdays in December? Uh, do you really? When's your birthday? The first. How old did you? How old were you on the first? Double nickel. Luke, your birthday's in December. How old were you this year? When is your birthday? Twenty seventh. A couple days. Ahead. So are you one of those kids that don't get any presents for your birthday because, or do you get lots of presents? Uh, how old are you going to be? I cannot believe it. The last of the Critchfield clan. Oh, my goodness. 12 years old. Hard to believe. Oh, my goodness. So, and I see Kara is back with us. Wow, look at that. She had that major surgery. Look at that. And there she is. I'm telling you now, that's a blessing. So how are you feeling? Good. Well, I'm glad you're feeling good. We really prayed for you, and I heard you did really pretty well. I'm hoping you don't have any more issues with that knee, all right? So that's really great. So, Lori, you have a birthday. I'm not going to ask you how old you are. We're not going to ask you that. Anybody else have birthdays? Okay, same, okay. Oh, I, I know all about that one. I know all about that one. And Miss Dorothy, you have a birthday. When is your birthday? The 15th, so just a couple days from now. And Dorothy, I don't know, can we say how old you are? Yeah, when you were 50, but not when you're what? What are you going to be? 93. Now look at that, huh? 93. Hard to believe, huh? Well, you know, when I, I've known you for 35 years, Dorothy, and let me tell you, you were 93 35 years ago. So, and neither was I, I can tell you. I feel like I'm 150. That's what I feel like. Uh, and then you actually have a uh, celebration uh, anniversary coming up. 
70 years wedding anniversary. Can you imagine, huh? Hard to believe. Hard to believe. Wow, isn't that great? And Harvey is going to be 95 in January. So in January he's going to be 95. Hard to believe. I'll tell you, God is good, isn't he, huh? Well, we do celebrate the five. So not yet, Dave. Not yet, but soon you're going to start getting those gifts, okay? Not the double nickel one, though, all right? But we do celebrate, you know, when you get a little older, we like to celebrate the fives every five years. So we do, uh, John, you had a birthday this past week, didn't you? And how old were you? Forty. He's a young one. He's a young one. Forty. Oh, those were the days, let me tell you. Uh, but guess what? So, Mr. Chuck, you had a birthday on Saturday. And how old were you, Mr. Chuck? 90. He was 90. So come on up, brother. We do celebrate the fives at 90, okay? So uh, we do have a little gift for you. And uh, just say, you know, we love you. We appreciate you. And uh, if you already have one of these, re-gift it. You know, that, that's what Christmas is all about, re-gifting, right? So uh, God bless you, brother. We love you. Yeah, we love you, and you are, you are a testimony. Is he not a testimony to, uh, to God and God's goodness? And you're not afraid to share the good news, are you? No, I'm not. No, he's not. They, they called him Sunshine in the Army, and I think that was a good name for him, don't you think? Mr. Sunshine, huh? So, well, congratulations, 90 years, 90 years young. Did you have a good birthday party? Uh, I figured you would. So that's great. Well, I'll tell you, you know, uh, p people talk about, you know, uh, you know, the church getting older. But you know what? I love our old people because uh, I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm one of them. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, because they are an example to us of God's faithfulness and goodness to us. I also love the young people as well. But uh, and everybody in between. But you know what? God is good to us. And uh, I'm thankful that we have a, a family church where we can celebrate, uh, you, know, the you know, the years, the years that God has given to us. And so I want to talk about a couple other older folks today, okay? I talked about John the Baptist earlier and the last of the Old Testament, you know, the, 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 the shriveled up tree, if you will, of the Old Covenant and one fruit hanging there. And that was John the Baptist, which ushered in the new covenant that God had for us. I'd like for us to, con uh, to consider though, a couple others uh, today. Would you turn with me to Luke chapter 2? Uh, and, uh, you know, Luke has a lot of Christmas stories that, that you don't find anywhere else. And um, I, I love this story. And uh, we had done uh, one of the very, very, very first uh, uh, cantatas that our church choir did back when I came with recorded music. Uh, well, the, the main theme of that was the song of Simeon and uh, that his eyes had seen the salvation of uh, his God. And I'd like to read that story. Would you look at Luke 2, verse 22? And I'd like to talk about his gift as well as our gift today. So Luke 2, uh, 22. This is after the birth of Jesus, and this was 40 days, 40 days after the birth of Jesus, all right? Now, when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, that's 40 days after the birth, they brought him, that is Jesus, to Jerusalem. Where were they up to this point? Where were they? Bethlehem. They were in Bethlehem, and they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Why? Because every male was the hope possibly to be the Messiah that God would send, right? Every Jewish woman hoped that she would give birth to the Messiah. And guess what? It happened. Amen? And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. 
And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. That's the salvation, the hope of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. That is God's Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. So he came by the Spirit, again the Spirit, into the temple. And when the parents brought him in, the child Jesus, to do for him according to the custom of the law, that is for that, that offering of the sacrifice, he took up, that is Simeon, took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him, that is of Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There would be some that would accept him and many would reject him. Now, there was also one named Anna. A prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age. And had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. That is, after seven years, her husband died. And this woman was a widow of about what? Eighty-four years she'd been a widow. Who did not, she did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke to him all those things who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Isn't it truly amazing the people that recognized and saw Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah? Isn't it amazing? Two old people. Two old people got to see the salvation of Israel and recognized who he was. You know, we in our culture, in our society today, you know, we, we elevate youth, don't we? We, we elevate youth and, and, and vitality and, and, and good looks and all those things. But let me tell you, it was to these old folks that God manifested and revealed himself. So do not, do not discount your age in the Lord because God can and will use you at every season in your life. 2,000 years ago, there was a great anticipation as those faithful few looked for the coming of the Messiah, of the Christ. It's the same word, Christ in Greek, Messiah in Hebrew. It means the anointed one, the Lord's anointed. The prophets of old had given their hints of his coming. But for almost 400 years, there had been prophetic silence in the nation of Israel. Years and years had passed, long, dry years of silence. But there were some there were some who held fast to the promise of the prophets. These faithful ones tenaciously believed in the promise that God would send the Messiah, the Christ. And they were watching. They were waiting. 
They were watching for the long-awaited Messiah, the Christ, that mighty warrior king that they had hoped would come, powerfully arriving to relieve his chosen people from the harsh oppositions that they had faced from, from nation and empire after nation and empire. They came under the subjection of these empires and they had hoped that the Messiah would come and deliver them. And they were watching for the promised one who would set captives free and that he would go about healing all who were sick. They were watching for their description, their understanding of how this Messiah should act, how he would come, what he would be like. They were watching with great and loud proclamations of his arrival with much pomp and circumstance. They thought that he would arrive on a white steed of victory and march into Jerusalem and take the capital and reclaim Israel. They were hoping for that. They watched. They waited But it's interesting that there were two. There were two who had waited and they were deeply satisfied in seeing a little baby. A little baby brought by two really poor people. They were satisfied in what they saw. Are you satisfied with Jesus today? Are you satisfied in who he is and who he has proclaimed himself to be? Or are you still looking for something? Are you always searching? Are you never satisfied? Because that's the world we live in. That's, that's the time we live in. We're never satisfied. Just a little bit more. I want Jesus to be this. I want Jesus to be that. Or are you satisfied with the Jesus that has come and revealed himself to us? These two in Luke chapter 2 that we had read, we read of that remarkable account of these two precious souls who saw the Lord's Christ, who saw the Messiah, who saw the anointed one, Simeon and Anna. Forty days after the birth of a male child, there was the ceremony of purification for the mother found in Leviticus chapter 12. And according to the law of Moses, a sacrifice was then required, a sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And Joseph and Mary obediently and joyfully set off from, from Bethlehem to Jerusalem to the temple with the precious son in their arms. And they were ready to fulfill the law of God. And then they enter in that, that temple area, that, those outer courts and how noisy and how busy that temple area was. Money changers and cages filled with doves and pigeons and all kinds of, of animals for sacrifice in those temple grounds. People were scurrying about, rushing to and fro. Loud greetings and, and intense negotiations. I'm not going to pay that. I only pay this. And Well, no, this is the bottom price for this. That, if you will, cacophony of sound and an outpouring and really of overpowering smells. And yet, in the midst of this busy scene, we find Simeon and Anna. Luke tells us that Simeon was just and devout and that it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not know death. He would not die before he saw Christ, before he saw the Messiah, the anointed one. Wow, think about it. Pre-Pentecost Simeon. <laughs> had a powerful encounter with the Holy Spirit who gave this astounding promise to him. Of all the people in Israel, there was only one Simeon and the Holy Spirit came to him and said, you will not die until you see my anointed one. Wow. Amazing. That powerful encounter with the Holy Spirit. Did, did the Spirit manifest this to Simeon in a dream? Did Simeon hear the audible voice of God? 
Perhaps maybe the spirit even translated into the temple in that exact time, at that exact moment, to see the baby Jesus. Because it says, in the spirit, in the spirit, he was brought to the temple. We don't know. And then there's Anna. Precious Anna. Luke reveals that she was an elderly prophetess who had been widowed for almost 90 years. <laughs> 90 years. This godly woman chose to live out her years without leaving the temple, worshiping, praying, fasting, serving day and night. How would you like to be in this church every day of your life? Two years. I mean, I'm sorry, two every day behind the scenes, faithful individuals were moved by the Spirit to be exactly at the right place in the temple at the right time. Are you watching? Are you waiting? Are you listening to the Spirit for the right time, the right place? Because you see, both had spot on discernment that this particular baby of all the babies that had come that day, because Jesus wasn't the only one being brought that day, was he? Of all the babies, of all the things going on, it was this baby, this particular baby, that was the promised one. Many people going about with their own agendas, moving about the temple that day, and yet only two, of all the multitude encountered the Messiah. Only two encountered the Lord's Christ. It sounds like our day, doesn't it? Everybody going to and fro and, and, and negotiating and, and, and all kinds of things going on in the cacophony of noise all around you. Are you going to be one that encounters the Messiah today? These two loved by God served him and believed that they would see the fulfillment of their heart's desires. They saw Jesus. They touched Jesus, the promised Savior of the world, and they lifted him up and they proclaimed him to be the Son of God. Their heart's desires were realized in that moment. During this season, this Christmas time, this Advent season, there will be some like Simeon and Anna who will see for themselves the long-awaited fulfillment of their promises from the Lord. Would you ask the Holy Spirit, would you ask Him to give you extra wise discernment like Simeon and Anna as you navigate in this season? Watch and listen carefully to the gentle whisper from God. And then you will know when to move, where to turn, what to pick up. And will you pick up the baby of your promise today? Will you hold him in your hands today? In this holy season, and that's what this is. It's a holy season, isn't it? Embrace this time with awe and wonder. The fulfillment of your promise might look very different from your expectations, just like the people of Jesus' day. But let me tell you, you will be absolutely, perfectly amazed at the marvelous gift that he's going to give you. Let's follow the examples of Anna and Simeon today. Let's pray, let's fast, let's worship, let's trust. Let's see the desire of our hearts manifested in his glorious presence in this holy season, celebrating the birth of our Lord and our King. Amen? Amen. Brother Jonathan. I promised Char that we would sing this song today. We'll do our best. Let's stand together.
Sorry for all the difficulties we're having. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. The soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, of hope the wind rises. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. All on your knees, oh. So we behold our God today. We lift you up and we worship you. May we go forth in this season with anticipation, just like Anna and Simeon that day. Help us not to miss the baby of our promise today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Love you. If we could have our men as soon as possible.